all that's likely to happen is that people that want dogs for, for weapons or for status, uh, they'll just move on to, to some other, perhaps even worse, uh, dog. So I think that the better emphasis would have been uh, to place it on the breeders. It concerns uh, banning of American XL bully dog. Uh, Rishi Sunak announced yesterday that this breed will be banned in the UK following a series of attacks. The American XL bully dog is a danger to our communities, particularly our children. It's clear this is not about a handful of badly trained dogs. It's a pattern of behaviour and it cannot go on. Today I have tasked ministers to bring together police and experts to firstly define the breed of dog behind these attacks with a view to then outlawing it. It is not currently a breed defined in law, so this vital first step must happen fast. We will then ban the breed under the Dangerous Dogs Act and new laws will be in place by the end of the year. Now, if successful, American XL Bully Dog will be the first breed to be banned since 1991, but critics say it's unlikely to work. People who work with dogs, handle dogs, who have said that this uh, proposed ban is A, workable, or B, going to be successful. What do you make of the Prime Minister's and the Home Secretary's proposals to ban this breed? Well... Judging by history, it is unlikely to work. Um, as you've indicated, we already have the Dangerous Dogs Act, which banned four different types of dog back in 91, um, and it hasn't prevented subsequent incidents. Um, and if, there, if this ban does go ahead, uh, all that's likely to happen is that people that want dogs for, for weapons or for status, uh, they'll just move on to, to some other, perhaps even worse, uh, dog. So. I think that the better emphasis would have been uh, to place it on the breeders, uh, to stamp out irresponsible breeders, backstreet breeders, um, and perhaps put more responsibility on the owners. Um, but, you know, I've got to accept um, the government must do as they will. Um, and if the politicians go for this ban, uh, then we'll have to work within it. Um, but we need to remember uh, that not every XL bully is dangerous. And not every owner of these dogs is irresponsible. Um, so I'm much relieved uh, by today's announcements from the uh, chief veterinary officer um, that there is going to be some form of amnesty. Mm -hmm. So the suggestion, it would seem, is that there will be some way of getting dog exempted. And we'll have to await the detail as to how that's going to work out. Trevor, there have been some suggestions that what might be easier and more expedient uh, for the government uh, to put temporary or perhaps more longer term uh, rules that uh, XL bullies or a particular type of dog, such as an XL bully, need to be on the lead and muzzled when in public. Is that more likely to be successful for the government rather than trying to identify the breed and then proceed to banning it? Well, if you're going to require lead and muscle as a, a separate uh, issue, you still need to define which dogs it relates to. So whichever we go for, whether it's a, a ban, a ban with exemption or just lead and muzzle requirements, you're still going to have to specify and be able to identify uh, which dog or dogs you're talking about. Um, so we, we don't recognise the, the American XL bully as a defined breed in this country. So undoubtedly, we're going to have to, to borrow uh, from an international breed standard. And I anticipate that will go very much along the lines that we did with pit bulls, which is that we banned the dog of the type known as the uh, pit bull terrier. And there's no reason why they couldn't adopt something similar. Mm. I think the concern is the unintended consequence of that, uh, because it may well uh, include all sorts of other dogs uh, that perhaps we didn't want to ban in the first place. So the government is right not to knee-jerk that decision, uh, but the suggestion from a, a news release from DEFRA last night uh, was that they were going to have this definition sorted within a week. Gosh. Well, uh, we'll see, but it'll be the courts that will have to interpret whatever it is that Parliament chooses to say, um, and I'm quite sure that there will be court cases, there will be test cases uh, to determine whatever it is uh, that Parliament chooses to ban.
Okay. I mean, I, I'm looking here at an article, albeit from last year, but it says that uh, for the, the 25 years that we've banned uh, pit bull terriers in the Dangerous Dog Act in 91, 25 years later, there are more than 3,000 uh, pit bull terriers in Britain. And this was uh, a year ago. So this idea that you ban something and that breed disappears from your society is uh, not uh, quite what happens. Trevor... Uh, other suggestions, uh, speaking to dog experts, have been put more pressure on breeders to be responsible. So if a dog that's attacked somebody gets traced back to them, then they're going to be as liable for having sold it to a dog owner uh, or a dog owner who wasn't qualified for, for a dog such as an American XL bully or other dogs that can cause um, serious injury. And also an idea that perhaps we should look at some form of dog licensing. So if you want to have a dog that's considered perhaps a, of a certain size and weight that it can cause serious damage, you have to go through some sort of process to prove that you are responsible, uh, have got the means to keep it, care for it, the time, etc, etc. Is that, and, and other countries do do similar schemes, is that something that we ought to be thinking about? OK, let's strip those various points down. Um, on the issue of the number of pit bulls that we have, um, you're right, there's over 3,000 pit bulls which are exempted at the moment. Um, but that's a very telling statistic, because in each and every one of those cases, the owner has gone to court and has proven that their dog isn't a danger to public safety. Right. That's the only way you can have the dog exempted from the ban. Um, so actually, perhaps it's the dogs themselves showing that they're not as dangerous as actually Parliament thought that they were. Um, so far as restrictions on uh, breeders are concerned, uh, the English government um, changed the law back in 2018 and they reduced the litter test. So it used to be if you had five or more litters of dogs in 12 months, you had to be registered. They reduced that to uh, three or more litters in 12 months. So you have then to uh, comply with licensing conditions of the local authority so they can have more checks on what it is that you're, you're doing. There are very stringent conditions. So maybe the time has come uh, five years later for us to revisit that. Um, and perhaps with renewed vigour, now that uh, we are aware that clearly there is a continuing issue in this country. Um, and perhaps um, bringing up standards of, of breeding is a way forward. Uh, what I'd certainly like to see is eradicating backstreet breeders completely. Um, as to owners, you're absolutely right there. We need to put more responsibility on the owner. It's easier to get a dog in this country than it is to get a bottle of whiskey. And there are no restrictions on owners uh, when they go out and choose to get a dog. Um, so some owners make very poor choices. Um, so perhaps the time has come, not, not for the return of the dog licence, because all that was was a tax on responsible dog owners, but maybe look at registration of owners. So an owner is going to have to show that they are a responsible person and perhaps they've undergone some form of training course uh, to show that they are fit and proper to, to have a particular dog. So I think that's a conversation absolutely that we need to be having. That's not going to come in overnight. Uh, whereas it would seem that this current um, measure that the government has announced, that is going to come in apparently by the end of this year. My office yesterday afternoon was inundated with phone calls from um, owners of XL Bullies who were really worried uh, because at that stage the government hadn't said that there was going to be any form of exemption. Mm -hmm. So I'm mighty relieved um, at the news uh, this morning, uh, but even so I need to now see the detail um, and at the moment, nothing by way of detail has been announced.